Hey everyone, my name is Taj Jankowski, and in this video, we're going to look at my solar system digital asset, Houdini digital asset. Now, this in this video, we're going to have a general overview, more or less a hello world. Uh, you know, your first time getting into this HDA, um, what can I do with it? How's it going to work? And some background on why I built this, why, you know, is this a geocentric model? Why are the scales all strange? You know, why is Jupiter so big and that's what we're going to look at in this video so first off uh, if you don't have the solar system hda you can get it in the link in the description um, it's on my gumroad if you follow me there it is here the live 3d solar system houdini hda once you download that you can install it. There's a video in a link in, in the link in, in the description on how to install the Solar System HDA. And once you've installed it and you fire up Houdini and you've got the Solar System working, go ahead and choose the Moon camera down here in the Houdini viewport. Choose the Moon camera, and you'll be basically the same place I am. However, your night sky will probably look different because presently it is April seventh at around eleven p.m. And this is what the sky looks like from Berlin if I were to look at the moon. Uh, we can verify that by looking at timeanddate.com and see that, in fact, the moon does look just like that. This here, if we even turn off the, uh, the viewport shading and lighting, we can see that even the orientation, the spin of the moon is correct and that it's actually in three space and all the other planets we can see Neptune, Mercury, Jupiter, and Saturn all hanging out in space, in 3D space. So uh, let's just go quickly and run through this list. Um, first of all, why did I build this? Well, um, I think space is pretty cool. Um, I think the moon is really, really cool. And I really just wanted to be able to kind of pay attention to it a little bit more. And I figured that there might not be another way, a better way to do that than to just build a kind of live 3D model of the solar system that I can basically do daily renders of procedurally, programmatically, and upload them to Twitter, Instagram, what have you. Um, all those, all the kind of social aspect, uh, all the, the social automatic stuff is kind of in the background. Um, and I have a proof of concept working, but it's not fully fleshed out, but the solar system HDA is now, and that is the big starting point. So that's why I built this. And if you have any questions on how you can do something like this, well, there's gonna be a bunch more videos on how I built this and how it works and all that fun stuff. So um, you might be saying, okay, well, when you zoomed out there, why was the moon in the center? Excuse me, you can hear my, my cat Mark is having um, a good time with his toys right now. The moon is in the center because this is a geocentric model of the solar system. Why would I build a geocentric model of the solar system and not a just model of the solar system where I could see where things are from Earth? Well, for one, the universe is massive. And tracking, and if I wanted to have, say, like a camera from a certain place on Earth, and this was a, a, a heliocentric model, I would have to do a bunch of transformations just to find basically every single time where I was on Earth and just you know connect the dots between where the sun is, where the moon is, all that fun stuff. So instead, I just figured I would do all those basically transforms inverse in the inverse, and so that I could have a cent like a centroid origin based system where I can just change locations to anywhere in the world and the entire solar system will update. So you can see now that the system has updated as if and you might know the lovely Tommy. So you can basically now pretend, uh oh, spinny wheel. You can basically pretend you're Tommy. You're standing on the origin 
and you're looking out into the night sky, and what do you see? You'll see the moon. Is that what the moon looks like in Tokyo? Well, let's have a look. Yeah, pretty close. Let's look through the moon cam. Yeah, there's your Tokyo moon. So that's why it's a geocentric model. And you might say, okay, fair enough, makes sense. Why is the scale all strange? Why is Jupiter so massive? Well, this is visual effects and <clears throat> I wanna maybe sometimes see the planets. Uh, if these were true to scale, they would be tiny, tiny little dots and that's no fun. Uh, I would rather see them and I wouldn't wanna have them actually the correct size and as far away as possible because then if I were to try and render all this stuff, I would have to compensate for ray distances, just incredible, incredible ray distances uh, to, to render everything. So that's why I basically brought everything to the origin so that I can even, you know, in a Houdini system, in a Houdini scene, hit F, which is to home the viewport, and you'll actually see the whole thing without just things clipping. I mean, this is still massive. You know, it's 30, you know, 25,000 meters uh, in, in radius, you know, it's, it's, that's massive. So it's still giant and it's big enough where it generally wouldn't interfere if you were to put a small, you know, you know a, a city down here and you wanna see uh, how, what the perspective of the planets are um, around that. And if anything, you can always go and return everything to its actual true system scale. So all the planets are scaled 500 times. <laughs> And the size of Pluto is even scaled 10 times on top of it, just so you can you can even see it after it's been, after the entire system scale of the universe has been scaled 0 0.005 times, uh, made smaller, uh, basically to where you are. It's like the entire universe is just like shrunk down um, by that much, but then the local scales of the planets have been brought up massively so that you can actually visualize them. If you returned everything to one, that is a true solar system scale. So everything's there, like it's all correct if you want to do that. So, because put ones everywhere, but you're going to have a horrible time working with it. Like at a certain point, physical accuracy means nothing if you can't render it. So there you go. Um, that's why the scales are all strange and maybe don't make sense. And that's also why the orbits are all circular. You can see that they're all perfect circles. And that's because this is actually the sky, the, the path that the planets take in the sky in a 24 hour cycle around Earth, around your location on the planet. It's pretty awesome. So you can actually physically see like where in the sky around you planets will travel. Now you might be saying, okay, well, they don't actually travel in a perfect circle around the, the axis because uh, every single day, everything changes a little bit. Well, yes, it does. So again, we're back to visual effects and we're back to just having a, conf a fun, cool visualizer. Uh, it's not physically accurate. These orbit paths aren't even the perfectly correct orbit paths across the sky. It's just a looped, perfectly circular orbit path across the sky, just so you have the circle, you have the circular path. Um, we'll get into later how I actually loop that. So if you wanted to animate this across the sky, like the moon traveling across the sky, you could loop this path, but a true loop, you know, you know across the timeline, it wouldn't actually even loop because the 24 hours later, which is actually if in, in time, at just the end of the sequence, that's 24 hours later. Like that's, you can even see the orbit paths change. So you couldn't loop this sequence. Um, we'll get into later. You can actually stash the solar data and loop it. Um, we'll look at that later. But uh, there, there's there's a whole bunch to this solar system HDA, you know, creating loops of the solar system, you know, planets as they physically are, physically lit, everything's, you know, from the sun. So there's, there's our lovely sun. It's actually black there because the light is inside of it. Um, but yeah, this is the solar system HDA. 
in other videos, we'll, we'll go through all of the parameters. But, uh, you know, thank you for listening to this Hello World video as a kind of, uh, hey, everyone, this is how, uh, this is what this uh, HDA is all about. So thank you for your time. Uh, I hope you enjoy the solar system HDA. And if you create anything cool, please feel free to uh, tag me at T-R-Z-A-N-K-O on whatever social you use. Um, I'd love to see what you can come up with. So uh, have, uh, have a great time enjoying the solar system, and I'll see you in the other videos.